I want to let y'all know that my hope as a Sixers fan, <laughs> it's back. Shout out Jeremy King. Shout out Ricky Council the Fourth. I mean, seeing these guys play, it gives me hope that the second unit is actually going to be good this year. It gives me hope that when Embiid gets off the court, the second unit can sustain itself. That was our biggest issue. That when Embiid was on the court, we were great. He goes off the court, we stink. That's literally why we lost and rebounding. But that was a big reason why we lost against the Knicks in the playoffs. What happened in that game five when we have a 10-point lead, 10, 12-point lead with Embiid? He goes to the bench, and at the start of the second quarter, now that lead is evaporated. So bringing in Jerry McCain and Ricky Council the fourth is only going to make the Sixers' depth better. And I would argue that if Jerry McCain and Ricky Council the fourth actually get minutes talking to you, Nick Nurse, and really, really prove themselves, this could be the deepest team Joel Embiid has ever played with. And I know some people, some people have been saying, oh, McCain should start. No, no. I, I've never seen two undersized guards work. I haven't seen that jump before. In, in, in NBA history. What I do want to see is Jerry McCain do what he does off the bench. He should be an Emmanuel quickly, even if you want to go back to our roots, Lou Williams. What Lou Will was doing for us, Jerry McCain can do that, but he's a better shooter too. So all you got to do is just become a better playmaker, which he's doing in his first game in Summer League. And voila. We got our guy. Somebody compared, some, one of my friends compared Jerry McCain to Manu Ginobili. I mean, like, I ain't mad at it. <laughs> I ain't mad at it. But that's the type of impact that we want Jerry McCain to have off the bench. For sure. Some guys, like, you just watch them play basketball. And you're like, yeah, he's going to be nice. That's Jerry McCain. So Daryl Morey and the Sixers did a great job of drafting the best player that was available and saying, yo, let's see if this works. And as of right now, I'm looking at this draft and I'm like, how the heck did the Sixers get Jerry McCain? How did he fall to 16? How did he fall to 16? He's a flat-out stud, bro. And I've been on record saying this. I will say it again. The more Jerry McCain hoops, the bigger chance everybody in Philly is going to be doing TikToks. I'm trying to tell you, bro, this city is so passionate that when their athletes are doing good, they'll just, bro, they'll, they'll, they'll do whatever, bro. Oh, you want to do the little... Uh, Bro, I promise you, bro, the next 30-point game Jerry McCain has, I don't even care if, if it's Summer League. If he has a 30-point game in Summer League or in the NBA, like regular season, I will do the let's go. That's that joint hot, bro. That joint hot, bro. So Jerry McCain, bro, if you want to do that for me, then, all right, cool, no diddy. Then, like, we can definitely do that, bro. We can definitely do that. So I got no shame in it because I feel like you make this team much, much better than it's ever been in the past. So guess what? My hope is back. My hope is back. And the way that I see these, these young guys playing, the Sixers are the second best team in the East. Easily. Easily. Now, with Ricky Council, 
Ricky Council should have been playing last year. Let me just read you his stats real quick. Because one of his biggest question marks coming into the NBA was his three-point shooting and his efficiency. So in nine minutes a game, only nine minutes a game this guy played this year. His field goal percentage was 48%. His three-point percentage was 37%. Put that into context, right? He's only playing nine minutes a game. He isn't getting enough time to really develop a rhythm. But he gets in the game during garbage time, is efficient, and cooks. You're telling me that this guy in his rookie year is almost shooting 50% from the field and almost 40% from three? And the question mark for him coming into the league was his three-point shooting? That's all I need to know about the guy. Because I know that each year he's going to improve. Each year he's going to be better than he was the year before. And what do he have today? 17 straight points in the fourth quarter. 19 points in the game. Five threes, five of ten. I'm trying to tell you, Ricky Council is too good for summer league, bro. I would play in one more game. He'll probably have 25 points. And it's just like, all right, bro, we know that you're nice. Go, you know, go go back in the gym with MB and Maxi. And the way that Jeremy came playing, I mean, shoot, I might say, you could sit out if you have a couple good games. I mean, we got a we got a young court, bro. And at them Bona, I'm not really that high on him. I hope I'm wrong on Bona. Like, I just feel like if one of his weaknesses is rebounding and getting in foul trouble, why would why would, why do you want that as a potential backup for Embiid? That doesn't make any sense to me. But hey, if the guy the guy has shown to be extremely athletic, and if he, you know, shows that he can rebound at a high level, and that he doesn't get in foul trouble like that, then look, I'm all for it, and I'll say that I'm wrong, but I'm not too high on Adam Bona for real, for real. Um, and so we'll pretty much see what this team looks like, but just after that summer league game. That told me everything I needed to know about Jerry McCain and Ricky Council the fourth. And I know that you're not supposed to like, you know, go crazy over summer league and because there's been times where guys have been great in summer league and then didn't fizzle out in the NBA. There's been times that guys did not do well in summer league and they did great in the NBA. Victor Wembanyama was 2 for 13 in his first game. Everybody's clowning him. Now he's about to be one of the best players of all time. <laughs> Literally. Literally. So, but the thing is, bro, the eye test is always real. The eye, te the eye test is always real. And just looking at Jeremy McCain play basketball, I know he's going to be very good for a very long time. And Daryl Morey hit the jackpot in drafting this guy. Daryl Star Power Morey hit the jackpot in drafting a potential star. A potential star. And the rest of the East better be scared. Better be scared to face this Sixers team next year. Because not only do we have a lineup that will start the game with Maxi, George, and B. You could put Ubre in there. Um, I think it's off the top of my head. Uh, I have to think about the next that next because we we could put Caleb Martin in the power four, but I, w I would like to see Caleb Martin off the bench. Uh, that would be that would help this this the second unit a lot. Let's just go ahead and just see 
before we end this episode, just what the Sixers lineup looks like, bro. What their roster is right now. Because it's somebody else that I'm missing off their roster that I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure, bro. Um, Robert Covington in that, John. I mean, look, bro. The Sixers can finish games with Tyrese Maxey at the one, Kelly Oubre at the two, Paul George at the three, Caleb Martin at the four, Joel Embiid at the five. They can mix that up too off the bench. When when this when the when the second unit comes, you can have McCain at the one, Eric Gordon at the two, Ricky Council at the three, you could put Kayla Martin at the four, and then Andre Drummond at the five. That's a that's a I like that lineup off the bench. I do like that lineup. And then some stuff I would like to see I would like to see Paul George run with the second unit a lot. Obviously he's gonna start and finish games. But like I've said before, the Sixers biggest problem is what they do without Joel Embiid on the court. And so if Paul George is that number one option for when Maxi and Embiid are off the court. He'll, he'll have a green light. He'll be with McCain and Eric Gordon and Caleb Martin. All shooters around him. And he'll be cooking, bro. He'll be cooking. Because I know y'all seen what Paul George did to Dallas. Remember that regular season game when he was putting on a master class against them, bro? Like, stop this Paul George disrespect, bro. Yeah, he's heard the noise and y'all woke up the bully. You woke up the bully. And the bully going to show y'all that it's 8-ball P. And 8-ball P is going to whoop y'all ass. No bat. No bat. Love y'all. Peace. Let's go with MJ. You know, we always keep it real. I'm out.